Okay, so today we're going to talk about the body defense systems. And I wanted to first talk about the different um, types of defenses that we have. And we can break them up into two broad categories, um, one being innate and the other being adaptive. Now, the difference between innate and adaptive is that innate um, includes defenses that are nonspecific. So nonspecific defenses. So these pretty much work against all pathogens, um, irregardless of what they, you know, what they look like, um, and all uh, sort of dangerous chemical agents, particularly large chemical agents like proteins. Um, and then the adaptive immune system is specific to um, recognized antigens. So these are the th are things that the body adapts to recognize as threats. Okay, so the innate immune system is again sort of subdivided into two broad categories. Um, one would be the barrier defenses and the other one would be the what's called the innate immune system so Actually, I see it's a little confusing because I'm using the word innate twice, but this is essentially just talking about innate defenses. And this is the innate immune system, and this is the adaptive immune system. Okay, so we're going to talk about barriers first. So what types of barriers do we have? Well, of course, we have, you know, um, the barrier of our skin on the outside of our body which covers our entire body and provides a physical barrier that prevents entry to all you know potential pathogens and then of course we have the mucosal membranes um, which provide barriers as well and of course the mucosal membrane um, includes the you know mouth and the nose and the pharynx and the throat and you know the large airways of our lungs and um, you know of course um, our genitalia have mucosa um, as well as does the entire gut you know it's sort of interesting to think of our, our bodies are really essentially you know, in, in its simplest form, we are actually like a hollow tube with our skin on the outside, and then a tube going through the middle of us on the inside. And of course, you know, the tube wraps around many, many times. Um, but this, in, you know, there's cells here on the outside that are skin cells that provide barrier defenses and then all the tube the tube on the inside provides barrier defenses with mucosal membrane so in a sense this tube on the inside is just an extension of the external environment so uh, obviously it's exposed to a lot of bacteria and and, uh, and other pathogens and potentially harmful proteins um, that the body needs to defend against and it defends against that with barriers. So let's talk about the skin first and we're talking specifically about barrier defenses so you know the skin is specially adapted to be a barrier um, it has large amounts of keratin in it to provide um, to provide a, a impenetrable structure that um, is difficult to damage or relatively difficult compared to other cells. Um, the skin also ha is um, covered with proteins or enzymes that um, that actually can lyse bacterial cells. Um, it actually has um, immunoglobulins on it as well. 
like I, particularly IgA. And then interestingly enough, another element of this barrier defense on our skin is normal flora. And it's interesting, I was just reading an article the other day about um, how many uh, bacteria that we have living on and inside our body. And we all have about 10,000 different species. And we, if you count up all the numbers of cells of our own cells, our own body cells, and the cells of microorganisms that live on us and within us, we have, um, there are more microorganisms in and on our body than innate body cells, than our own body cells. And these are all normal flora that live on our skin. And they're an important form, um, they're an important part of our um, barrier defense system. And, you know, if you think about what the normal flora do, is they're sort of um, mutualistic organisms. That means they live with us and we both help each other. Um, and they, um, they decrease the growth of harmful bacteria. So they suppress growth of um, harmful bacteria and they actually have some um, bactericidal activity as well. Now remember a lot of um, a lot of our antibiotics actually come from um, from microorganisms um, like um, uh, like streptomycin and um, you know I can't remember them actually penicillin um, actually are derived from microorganisms. So microorganisms have um, very strong um, uh, antibiotic chemicals within them that prevent the growth and um, and actually can have bactericidal activity. Okay, and then of course the next big category of our barrier defenses are the mucous membranes. And you know a good example of this is the trachea. And if you look at the ins you know sort of a cross section of the trachea, um, you know that we have this. Um, pseudostratified columnar epithelium and you know it's interspersed with, with occasional goblet cells and this pseudostratified columnar epithelium is ciliated right so there's a little cilia on here and I know this is just a review for you because everybody has learned this before. So we have these cili um, ciliated pseudocolumnar epithelium and the pseudocolumnar epithelium um, actually the goblet cells secrete really large amounts of mucus and you know I think what people don't realize is just how much mucus that a normal lung has. It actually creates a blanket layer that rides on top of the cilia and of course the cilia beat in an orderly fashion and it constantly moves this blanket layer up. So this blanket layer is actually so thick that it, it in itself is impenetrable to bacteria. There's no cracks in this barrier. This blanket covers the entire surface and it also is sticky so the bacteria get stuck to the mucus and then when they're stuck to the mucus they get pushed out with the mucus. Now just to give you an idea of exactly how much um, mucus we have a normal healthy person creates, excretes, and swallows one liter of mucus per day. Now usually this is just occurring completely subconsciously the mucus is just working its way up to um, the posterior oropharynx and we swallow it without even thinking about it the only time we become conscious of it is if we have increased um, secretion and the cilia aren't functioning well and then we end up with you know, too much mucus getting stuck in our throat and then that triggers a cough reflex and makes us cough it up and then sometimes we'll cough it up into our mouths and we'll be aware of it. But this liter a day, we're generally not aware of. So um, this is a significant 
barrier. So it provides both a physical barrier and a chemical barrier. And the chemical barrier, you know, sort of has some mechanical properties to it because it's sticky and it's in motion. And the mucus is also sort of biologically active. It has um, lysozymes in it and um, it also has immunoglobulins in it, particularly again immunoglobulin A. Okay, so um, these are examples of our barrier defenses and of course we have similar defenses like this throughout our GI tract where we have um, mucosal, a mucosal lining um, in our GI tract and constant movement um, of our GI tract moving um, things from in, um, in a direction towards the outside of our body. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, about normal flora. So um, again, I talked about it a little bit um, on the skin, but obviously it's a really central component of the uh, barrier defenses in our gut. So normal flora. Now, just to give you an idea of just how important this is, we know that if we um, if we disrupt the normal flora in the gut, that it increases the uh, our susceptibility to infection considerably. For instance, um, there has been mouse, st uh, mouse studies that show that when we eradicate the flora, if we eradicate the flora in the gut of a mouse, we increase their susceptibility to a salmonella infection by 10,000 fold. So that means, you know, if typically, you know, we've got a little mouse here, and you know typically the mouse needs to ingest you know one back um, 10,000 bacteria a big mouthful of 10,000 bacteria and obviously it's not really going to be a mouthful um, to get to develop an infection to salmonella um, this poor little mouse is only going to need to eat one bacteria to uh, develop an infection uh, from salmonella. So this gives you an idea that actually just the normal flora in and of itself um, makes it very unlikely for us to have infection. So, um, and by treating um, a mouse with powerful antibiotics, you're increasing their chance of getting an infection by 10,000 fold. Um, now, we know about this in humans, those of us who, who work in the hospital, because we know when we give patients antibiotics, it makes them susceptible to Clostridium difficile. And this is the same kind of situation where um, what we're doing is we're killing off the normal flora and making our guts much more susceptible to C. difficile infection. In fact, normal flora is the central defense against C. difficile infection. Um, and the same is, is really true on the skin as well. If we, um, one of the major problems with giving patients antibiotics um, is that you make them susceptible to what are called super infections where their skin, skin can be infected, uh, particularly with, um, with yeast or fungal, or fungal infections. Okay, in my next video, I'm going to um, start talking about the innate immune system and inflammation.